Hi, and welcome to episode six of Metastatic Modernity. I'm recovering astrophysicist Tom Murphy, and this episode is on our role as accidental tourists on this planet who didn't really have to be here. It's our next step in putting modernity into context. So the first point is none of this was planned. This universe, this life, this planet, the situation we find ourselves in just happened because it could somewhat randomly. And whatever you think of determinism, the complexity is such that predictability is essentially impossible. And rather than having some single linear thread of a story, it's really more like a lot of braided intertwined stories that influence each other meandering through time in parallel. Um, it's going to unfold that way. It's going to be unpredictable, no guarantees in what happens. And just as you probably have heard stories about how your parents almost didn't meet or reasons why you almost weren't here, it's the same. I mean, welcome to the universe. That's how it goes. It's, it's the same very convoluted story of random occurrences throughout the, the whole thing or random seeming. And so even at a species level, if the asteroid that hit at Chicxulub had missed the Earth, well, the history of Earth would be quite different, and we probably would not be here at all, and almost certainly wouldn't be. So one way to view this kind of randomness is in depictions of a tree of life, and there are various ways to show this. I kind of like the one on the right because it shows the branches and the trunk that are historical ancestry that supports where we are today. We've got something like 10 million species. The eukaryotes that include plants and animals are on the far right in green here. And really, we're just twig ends on this, this tree, and they're all temporary. The tree is still growing, and so nothing is constant, nothing is static. There's no guarantee that any particular twig will have a successor that shoots off from it, so there are a lot of dead ends. Now, depictions like this do leave out a whole lot in terms of all the interactions and interdependencies, the complexity, the ecology, and we wouldn't even know how to draw those things if we could. It would be quite a mess in any case. There's another, another depiction that I like, and that's this one. It sort of overemphasizes the eukaryotes, but it shows time as concentric ellipses expanding ellipses and various mass extinctions and a lot of dead ends. So that's what our actual shrub looks like. A lot of dead ends along the way, many of them at these mass extinctions. Now humans are shown somewhat artificially at the very extreme lower right in this diagram. And that's just an arbitrary cho choice. It doesn't have to be that way. It's somewhat artificial. We could be anywhere on this thing. We're not really special. And that brings us to the point that if evolution were aiming for humans, it has terrible aim because it made 10 million species in parallel, whoops, by accident or what? No, it wasn't aiming for us and we're not the pinnacle, we're not the best. In fact, we're the species right now causing the most harm to the rest of the community of life, initiating a sixth mass extinction, which we'll get to later in the series. So I like to think of this as we are new, newly inducted members in the club of life. Um, now, 99% of our dues have been paid by our ancestors, by the evolutionary tree that led the trunk and branches that led us to this point. So it's important to realize that our membership can be revoked at any point. That's true for anything in the tree of life. And we're actually misbehaving right now in terms of terminating many, many different memberships of species across the, the kingdom of life. Um, we're not ourselves a keystone species. We're not at the heart of ecologies where the rest of the living world really depends on us. Uh, Earth really got along fine without us for billions of years, and we're just, you know, newcomers, 300, uh, sorry, just about 3 million years that humans have been on the planet. So, um, we should consider ourselves lucky to be here, to be in this club of life. It's my instinct to respect the rules that got us here and 
play by the rules of the club of life. And those rules have worked for a long time because all species have played uh, in this co-evolving process in full ecological context. And that turns out to be important. Now, this next bit may seem like a bit of an unsubstantiated leap. It makes total sense to me. If it doesn't to you, I hope it will by the end of the series. But for now, you can just think of it as an example of the perils of not playing by the rules of the club of life. So we imagine ourselves as having, having transcended the boring constraints of life on this planet. We've launched this new and exciting trajectory that, um, you know, seems very fun. It's exhilarating. It's a thrill ride. But the contraption that we're using wasn't built on the principles of ecological sustainability. It's not magically going to sustain itself or continue the ascent that we've been on. You know, it feels fun. It's exhilarating, but it's very temporary. It's not vetted to be ecologically sustainable. It's in blatant violation of the club rules and it's initiating a six mass extinction. So nothing indicates that it possibly would be sustainable. I mean, it utterly depends on non-renewable material resources. I mean, fossil fuels for sure, but even solar panels. So for all our smarts, no one has yet sketched out a credible plan for how modernity could possibly continue in effect indefinitely, even for a thousand years. So I want to be careful about our tendency toward hubris here. And sure, there are a lot of amazing perks to this uh, thrill ride and we're in midair. Uh, we can talk about those all day, but if in the end it's all grossly unsustainable, then it's temporary because unsustainable things fail. There's no evidence that our current path is at all ecologically sustainable or playing by the rules of the club. So that's it for this episode. In the next one, we'll look at the ecological nosedive as a result of this madcap trajectory we're on and as a consequence of not playing by the rules of the club. Um, as always, I encourage you to look at the Do the Math blog where I have a companion piece to this that's more complete, coherent, well thought, and written. So check that out. Until then, see you next time.